we build things. Without structural engineers, this world is not possible. It was here 4,000 years ago in Indus Valley civilization in Monjodaro. People constructed things. They were structural engineers. Most books are just focused on process or method. And that will not get us thinking. We need books. How to improve intuition. And there are four steps I will discuss here. First is practice hand calculations. And secondly, I would say, study failures. And third and most important thing, which I use it myself as well, <laughs> which is observe real structures, how they were built. Last step is really very important. And that is, Next question is also very interesting. As a young graduate, how can we have uh, an engineering feeling or intuition? Now, again, this is really very interesting question. And young or experienced, my point of view is that when you treat yourself as a learner, then you improve lots of things. It is a personal and professional development. When you say that you are a learner, then lots of things can be improved. And I will give you some tips how to improve intuition. First is, and there are four steps I will discuss here. First is practice hand calculations and start with really, really very simple problem. If you are a student watching this, start with very simple problem. Just to give you an example, day before yesterday, I posted one question on LinkedIn with fixed cantilever and with a point load applied and I asked for shear force diagram. It has so many impressions. It has, it got so many people into discussing. Very simple one. It's just not something difficult. You apply a load over here, shear force diagram will be constant throughout. As simple as that. So start with very basic, very simple things. And secondly, I would say study failures. Failures teach engineers lesson. Baltimore Bridge in USA, recent failure. Tacoma Narrows Bridge in USA. Study about soft story concepts where we have earthquake. And understanding why they happened and how they could have been avoided and see what lessons can we learn from it. Failures teach us how small oversights like resonance, like weak lateral resistance can lead to major issues. And this really, really helps us. Although as a structural engineering professional, I'm not in favor of talking to media when some failure happens because most of the time people know about structural engineers when some failure happens. So we got to be talking about important things. As engineers, we simplify lives. We build things. Without structural engineers, this world is not possible. It was here 4,000 years ago in Indus Valley civilization in Monjodaro. People who constructed things, they were structural engineers. So as structural engineers, we should be promoting positive side of engineering rather than when some failure happens, somebody calls us and we talk to them. And third and most important thing, which I use it myself as well, <laughs> which is observe real structures, how they were built. Just to give you an example, Tower Bridge, the famous London Tower Bridge, it's just 20 minutes away from my workplace. So I, I sometimes, if it is a sunny day, most of the time in 
in the UK, it's <laughs> raining. In fact, it's raining right now as well. <laughs> if it is a sunny day and if it is fairly warm, then I would go there and and see how this structure was built and how what are cables and see structures, observe structures. Another example, I was traveling one day on train and I saw oh, a seat which was a cantilever seat. It was attached with one side of train and then it was cantilevered. So I was thinking, I took a picture and showed it to first year structural mechanics students and they, they really liked it. So observe real structures. And the last step is really very important. And that is to compare with software. Use software. These days, we cannot solve complex structures without software. Use it. Learn new software. Use AI as well, but not completely rely on it. So use something that can verify your outputs. In this way, you will really develop confidence in terms of how you can develop this intuition. What I would say is Engineering intuition, it grows with practice. It grows with curiosity and it grows with reflection. So this is something I do it myself as well. When I learn new things, I'm, I'm very curious about it, just like for structure and intuition. And remember that it's not something that we are born with. It is something that we build over time, step by step. And start small, question everything, and over time, you will see, you will develop this ability to see how a structure behaves, even before you calculate it. So that's how you develop those skills. Now, if you are a practicing engineer, if you are a student, if you are experienced, my question to you is that how did you first start developing your engineering intuition? Yeah, meanwhile, uh, one engineer has asked that, uh, can you suggest uh, books which, uh, which should be read for structural engineering? Books are very useful. But what I believe is that in structural engineering and in academia, most books are just focused on process or method and that will not get us thinking. We need books which can get us thinking. Think about design. Most of the books that you will see, you will encounter, they will be about element design. We just want to have element, we want to have a simply supported structure and we want to analyze it and we want to design it. That's it. Real life is not like that. We, most books on design, they are just on element design. We have to focus more on conceptual side of things. And I think intuition includes conceptual side of things and schemes, scheme as well. In design office, most of the time when you work, do you instantly start with element design? The answer is no. You develop concepts. So conceptual design is very useful, but you will not find many books, just one or two. And that too will give you lots of detailed stuff to understand things. We need steps. We need quick things. In, in this day and age of social media, our attention span has really gone down. We want something quick. Our attention span is seven seconds. Like if you watch scrolling social media and watching reels, it's seven seconds. So if we can grab attention within seven seconds, that's absolutely fine. The books that I would suggest, uh, one that will really, uh, David Bronze, Understanding His Structures, and I think I have it here. Another one I have, have it here is this one. This is a Structural Engineer's Pocket Book. And this will give you all the load span ratios and stuff like that. It's based on your code, but the general principles apply to everything. And think about, let me take this one out as well. <laughs> think about this one as well. 
uh, ICE manual for structural structural design. It's very useful. It gives the overall uh, process. And uh, there's one book by Mike Byfield, which is about design. I think I have it here. Let me have a look. This one. It's a structural design from first principle. So it tells you how to, by uh, Michael Bayfield, it tells you how to design structures from first principle. These are these are very uh, useful books in my view. But it's not like in social media you often see this thing that one book that changed my life. It's not like that, right? So it's a combination of different things. These days, a lot of free things, free stuff is available. Go to LinkedIn and have a look at free stuff. Go to YouTube and have a look at uh, free stuff. But the only trouble is that we don't make it interesting enough for people to watch it. And what's the reason? In my view, the reason is that we don't enjoy it ourselves. That's why it is, it, it is not transmitted to other people. We do it in a really, really boring way. And this is something that we all have to improve as well to talk about profession in really, really fun way, in really, really engaging way. Thank you. Okay. okay we have started receiving few responses like uh, Abhishek, Abhishek uh, is saying that uh, hand calculations only and site visits. Site, uh, site visits help me more than calculations. Yes. Okay, Rahul is saying that for uh, trust bridges, uh, I imagined projection lines running towards center of span for diagonal members. Uh, so I found that longer the length of the projection line, higher is the force uh, in the member. That's very, very useful. That's very thoughtful, actually. Yeah. Okay. One more, Rahul is saying that intuition on uh, on where cracks initiate and which direction it propagates in RC structures and how to do rebar detailing to counter uh, that is required. Yeah, okay. And a couple of uh, books have been suggested by, uh, by engineers. Okay, one more point. Uh, structures uh, are only or yeah, why things yeah. don't fail is a great book, right? Okay, someone is asking about 10 security structures. Okay, that we may discuss uh, in the uh, yeah. future session. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. They, uh, as I was saying, that there, there were so many questions. And I was amazed, actually. I didn't expect that response, honestly. I, I thought I would be simply talking to a couple of people. But probably, I think uh, Bhavan is really very famous. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because of it, people ask questions. 